the story of Christ's passion is not a story that simply took place far away long ago. The story of Christ's passion is yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It speaks truths that are eternal and invites us to confront the most fundamental of human experiences. Our worship environment this afternoon reminds us that this day is a day where all of the trappings are stripped away. It reminds us that Jesus stripped naked, stretched out upon the wood of the cross, comes to us in the complete and total vulnerability of love. And we find ourselves asking the most fundamental of questions. Asking the question of good and evil. That eternal struggle that was Adam's and Eve. That eternal struggle experienced by all of us, numbered among the human family. The characters that first Good Friday, the characters present in the story of Jesus' passion, invite us to take three paths in confronting the power of the world, in confronting the power of evil. One path is to give in. One path is to believe in the redemptive power of violence. That misguided notion that if I exert just enough <coughs> violence and punishment, I'll bring the other to his or her senses. I'll bring the other to my sense of order. To give in was the path that the Roman government took. It's the Pax Romana. It's a false peace. It's a peace founded on the strength of the sword. without a care or concern for what's just. In that peace without justice is the misguided belief in redemptive violence. The Sanhedrin and the temple authorities gave in. They gave in to the misguided belief in redemptive violence. The words of Caiaphas, the high priest, better that one should die than a whole nation be ruined. 
Let's look for what's convenient rather than looking for what's right. Our journey of life can sometimes tempt us to give in, to walk the path of redemptive violence with tragic consequences. It can move somebody to commandeer a 747 and fly it into a tower filled with innocent lives, rationalizing that, that somehow just this amount of violence will make things right. Another path that the passion reveals is the path of giving up. It's the path revealed in those characters who on Sunday were waving palms and shouting Hosanna. It's the path of those whose hopes have been dashed and who have given in to despair. They've given up. They've become those who walk by the crucified Christ and jeer. The path of giving up invites us to a chronic cynicism. It's a sad path of hopes that have been dashed. Jesus and the faithful remnant gathered around the cross invite us to a third way. Rather than to give in to injustice, to misguided power and violence, rather than to give up in the face of what seems to be defeat. To give up and remain cynical. To stand on the sidelines in sarcasm. Jesus and the faithful remnant gathered around the cross offer us a third path. To give it over the path of redemptive suffering. <coughs> the path that says, I trust even when I don't understand. I trust that love, I trust that peace, I trust that life will overcome hate, and discord and death. Today, the passion of Jesus Christ, as real in this moment as it was some 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem, challenges us. as we are tempted to give in or to give up, <coughs> to give over, to give over our will, to give over thinking that says my way or the highway, to give over the false belief that Mike might makes right, give over our will, our very self, to a God who loved the world so much, he 
gave his only son. One of the powerful things about this sanctuary stripped so bare for me are the words on the stanchion that can easily be overlooked when our eyes can focus on the pretty adornment. But for me today, the words of that stanchion, for God so loved the world, are a powerful invitation that rather than giving in or giving up, when we give our will over to God, transformation takes place. Hope is reborn. Life is realized.